For over 100 years, scientists have been perplexed by a bizarre moment in history that seemingly still cannot be verified, even now in the confines of 2019. It was a moment that occurred in the vast wilderness of Russian Siberia, a location that seemingly witnessed such a colossal force of destruction that an entire forest was decimated and flattened in an instant. The mysterious Tunguska event, in actual fact, is the largest impact event on Earth in recorded history, and yet the mystery surrounding it has given rise to a number of theories as to what could have possibly ever wrought such destruction. Hello internet, what's going on and once again welcome back to the most inquisitive channel on YouTube, life's biggest questions. As per usual, I'll be your disembodied floating voice Jack Finch as today we curiously ask the question, what really happened at the Tunguska event? Picture this, it is the early morning of June 30th 1908 in a remote part of Russia that converges around the Siberian wilderness in an area that runs adjacent to the Podkamenya Tunguska River or Stony River in English. In the sky within moments of this serene landscape previously being utterly peaceful and still, something exploded in the atmosphere that caused such ferocious destruction that over 80 million trees covering an 820 square mile radius were flattened in a single instance. Whatever it was, the explosion itself released enough energy to kill every single reindeer and other creature unfortunate enough to get caught in its blast radius. Roughly around 20 to 30 megatons of energy, about 1,000 times greater than that of the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima in 1945. The magnitude of this shockwave alone would have measured 5.0 on the Richter scale, and if it would have occurred in any other location than the remote wilderness of Russia, the loss of human life would have been utterly devastating. In fact though, there were casualties involved in the Tunduska event, allegedly taking the lives of three unfortunate people, and although on record there are zero confirmed deaths, still even that remains a mystery. And yet, in an even more astonishing turn of events, there were eyewitness accounts of the Tunguska explosion, hundreds of them in fact. Thousands of people in a radius that covered over 900 miles observed this cataclysmic event, and more than 700 eyewitness reports were later collected. These reports described a bright fireball in the sky, one that appeared in the morning horizon like a second sun, and a subsequent series of explosions with an impossible ear bursting sound. The ground shook and the earth seemed to open wide as if everything would slip into the abyss. As several of these other reports stated, these breathtaking eyewitness statements varied from the scientific and geological to even the religious. The indigenous Evenks and Yakuts believe that a god in their traditions of shamanism had sent a pyroclasm of a fireball to destroy the earth, and various meteorological stations as far as Western Europe recorded both seismic and atmospheric waves resulting from the Tunguska event. In fact, days later, strange phenomena were also observed in the reports, and in the skies of both Russia and Europe, glowing clouds, strange, bizarre sunsets, and the luminescence of the night followed in the days afterward. But here is where things get a little bit unusual. You see, initially, international newspapers speculated as to what could have caused such destruction. Obviously, the most clear and present understanding would have been an impact event, yet, as they would quickly find, there was no impact crater to be found. Nothing. An explosion of such tremendous force would have undoubtedly resulted in an incredibly large impact crater, yet, there wasn't as much as a dent to be found, geologically speaking, of course. Initially, international newspapers speculated about a volcanic eruption, perhaps one that had occurred deep within the Earth's crust, yet Russian scientists such as Dr. Arkady Voznanensky, who had recorded the subsequent seismic waves from the explosion, could only draw the conclusion of a similar cosmic impact. The thing was, whatever the case, the remoteness of the Tunguska event combined with the unstable political turmoil at the time meant that the mystery of the explosion would be put on ice for over 13 years. And in fact, it wasn't until 1921 when a Russian mineralogist by the name of Leonid Kulich rediscovered an article pertaining to the since forgotten explosion of Tunguska. Although it would take him six more years to assemble the logistics of his mission, on April 13th, 1927, Kulich finally discovered a large area of rotten logs cast across the landscape like matchsticks. 
This was the forest of Tunguska, the epicenter of the blast that had so far been unverified, that still contained evidence of the millions upon millions of dead and charred trees, some of which were still standing, stripped of both their bark and their branches. Despite exploring the entire area, Coolidge couldn't find a single shred of evidence to suggest what had actually occurred here. No impact crater, no meteoric material left behind from the explosion. In fact, Coolidge would only be able to hazard a guess as to the origins of this destruction. And in the fall of 1927, he published a preliminary report that was later circulated by international newspapers, suggesting that, yes, indeed, the Tunguska event was was caused by an iron meteorite that exploded somewhere in the upper atmosphere and he hypothesized that the unidentified impact site was instead explained away by the swampy ground of the Tunduska landscape. His prognosis was that the area was far too soft to have preserved any kind of crater and yet even he wasn't certain on that. One thing was for certain though, this mystery continued and the fact is, despite its remarkable notoriety in popular culture, still to this day the scientific data surrounding Tunguska is sparse. Since 1928, more than 40 different expeditions have explored the site, taking samples from the topsoil, the geological makeup and even the surviving trees. And yet, despite that, nothing can corroborate Kulich's suggestion. In 1934, based upon Coolidge's previous work, several Soviet astronomers proposed that it was indeed a comet that exploded in Tunguska, and yet considering the fact that comets are mostly composed of ice, instead it had completely vaporized during the impact, subsequently turning to water vapor. Later, Alexander Kavenskev, a popular Soviet science fiction author and engineer, after studying the aftermath of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, argued that a nuclear explosion equivalent to over 1,000 atomic bombs was actually of possible extraterrestrial origin. Kazantsev suggested that the Tunguska blast was either a UFO that had crashed in Siberia and was subsequently covered up, or instead an interplanetary weapon that was detonated there for unknown reasons by an unknown civilization. And it doesn't end there either, because in 1973, several American physicists proposed that the real explanation was that a small black hole had collided with our planet, causing a matter antimatter explosion high above Earth's atmosphere. However, perhaps the most compelling proposal is a phenomenon known as the Vernshot Hypothesis. In the late 60s by astrophysicist Wolfgang Kund, this explanation suggests that the Tunguska event was caused by the release and subsequent explosion of over 10 million tons of natural gas from within the Earth's crust. Essentially, although an incredibly rare event, the mechanics of the Vernshot Hypothesis suggest that following the natural gas leak from the Earth's crust, its equal density caused it to rise to the height of the atmosphere, where Eventually, it was ignited by a strike of lightning, almost acting like a wick in a stick of dynamite, essentially blowing up the earth below it. Now, whilst this is indeed a rare event, similar smaller occurrences have happened and most importantly had been verified by the scientific method. One thing remains the same though, for over 100 years the Tunguska event is a constant thorn in the side of the curious mind. Considering the fact that only sparse clues have survived since the explosion in 1908, most of which were recorded decades later, the Tunguska event has proven to be an investigation of the imagination. The sad truth is we may never know or an event may occur sooner rather than later that corroborates what we do know forcing us to reassess the meteorological phenomena of our planet. And until then, it's either a ticking time bomb or an eternal mystery. Well, what about that? What do you guys think happened at the Tunguska event? Do you think we'll ever know? Then let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And who knows, maybe we'll be one step closer to its discovery. Before we depart from today's video though, if you'd like to continue on with your questioning binge, then please do feel free to check out our neatly compiled playlist arranged for your viewing enjoyment. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Cheers, stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video or just life's biggest questions in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your disembodied floating voice, Jack Finch. You've been watching Life's Biggest Questions. And until next time, you take it easy.